Dear colleagues, this is fake emulsification of an intumescent cataract. By this time, all the incisions, that is, the main incision and two side ports have been made. Now, I am staining the anterior capsule with tripan blue dye. I usually stain the anterior capsule underneath an air bubble. Now, the dye is being washed out using a Simco cannula. And now, capsulorexis is to be done. Now, to avoid or to prevent occurrence of Argentine flag sign, what I do is I do a two stage rexis or double rexis. I do a mini rexis first and then I enlarge the mini rexis after decreasing intralenticular pressure. See, this is how I incise the anterior capsule. The C flap is made and a small erexis is made at this stage. I have used only HPMC before making this small erexis. I haven't used sodium hyaluronate. Now what I do is I aspirate some cortical matter through this small opening to decrease the intralenticular pressure. This is a very simple technique and I advise you to do this. Just do on case and you will love it. You don't need sodium hyaluronate to do rexis in intumescent cataracts. Just the initial small incision should be a curved one should be a C flap. This C flap is the key to avoid Argentine flag sign. Now after decreasing intralenticular pressure I make a nick and hold this capsular tag with Ibtota forceps and enlarge this rexis into an optimum sized capsulorexis. This optimum sized rexis is about 5.5 millimeter or so. And see, manually we can do circular rexis like this. And I hope you will agree that it is comparable to a femtorexis. So dear colleagues, we just have to increase our skills. Otherwise, we will end up in investing a very costly instrument that will do the same job. Circular rexis, which you can do manually in an intermittent cataract, you will do the same thing with a femto laser. Now this is direct chop which I do nowadays in almost all cases except in very hard cataracts. I made one or two three skulls to go to a deeper plane. Now you can call it submarine chop. That's it. Now I rotate the nucleus and chop it at another place. Rotate it again and separate the initial crack line. And this is the another chop to divide the other hemineucleus. Now, I use ultrasonic energy to remove the fragments. Feco power used in this case was 70%. Flow rate was 45 ml per minute. Vacuum was 450 millimeter of mercury. That's it. The nucleus has been managed. 
Now through the side port this small nuclear bit is coming out. Now cortical cleanup is done and this is hydro polish. I am using the jet of fluid to polish the posterior capsule. There's it. A lot of cells are sticking to the posterior capsule in this case and just by jet of fluid of the irrigating probe I polish the posterior capsule. Now using irrigation to keep the antechamber formed I am implanting a hydrophilic acrylic intraocular lens in this case. There's it. The lens haptics have gone into the capsular bag. And now the case is done. There is no viscoelastic substance in the anterior chamber. So a lot of time is saved if you if we implant intraocular lens under irrigation, a lot of time is saved that have to be spent to remove the viscoelastic substance. Now the side ports are hydrated. Moxifloxacin has been injected into the anterior chamber. The theme of this video is we have to increase our surgical skills. If we increase our surgical skills, we can do beautiful job without help of a very costly, costly instrument like a femto lasik, sorry, femto laser. That will cause, that will help you in making and doing capsulorexis in intumescent cataracts. Now this is the final wash. This is the final wash with a Simco cannula. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Please do a great job. Please serve the humanity with your great surgical skills.